thing we're not going to insure is a traditional lease. So if you're doing a traditional six month, six month lease or a traditional 12 month lease, you're way better suited with a landlord policy, which right. is half the price and it's already in the market and is built for what you need. Do you differentiate um, between a 30, 60, 90 day tenant versus uh, short term? Like, would your coverage be different if you're focusing on 30, 60, 90 days? We don't. So one thing when we developed the product back in 2014 that we took into consideration was removing any definition of occupancy. So that allows us to ensure the house that might double as a primary residence. You could maybe you invest in a duplex and one half is your primary, the other half is a short term. We're gonna insure the entire structure. You don't need two policies, we cover you through and through. Um, there's the corporate lease or traveling nurse market out there, especially you know during the pandemic when all that was going on, you know, the extended vacation. I'm getting out of New York City and I'm going to the Finger Lakes and I'm gonna stay there for 60 days. And so the question was with our existing clients, what, am I covered for that? Because it's no longer a short-term rental. Mm -hmm. um, yes, with our product, it is. If you don't have our product, you need to be cognizant of what the occupancy definitions are to make sure you're covered for that. And that's one thing about, that's you know so great about our policy for many of these short-term rental uh, operators out there is the flexibility and, and length of stay. Yeah. So, I have somebody rent my place for three days this weekend, but I get a phone call from a traveling nurse that needs to stay for 90, and I'm gonna make tons of money because the hospital's paying for it. Um, and they're gonna pay me, you know, above market rate anyways. Awesome, do it, that's fantastic. Um, the only thing we're not going to insure is a traditional lease. So if you're doing a traditional six month, six month lease or a traditional 12 month lease, you're way better suited with a landlord policy, which right. is half the price and it's, it's already in the market and it's built for what you need, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that's the long way to answer it, but short answer is no. We don't really have a definition of length of stay for what is a short-term rental, but we remove the occupancy definition so that we can cover a multitude of different lengths of stay. Plus you have people that are renting rooms out of their own home for short term. Yeah, and that's a that's a small, small part of the market anymore, the shared spaces. That's one mm -hmm. thing we don't um, really cater to. Uh, if you are renting, if, if you have a three bedroom house and you're an empty nester and you're renting out, you live in the master and you rent out two bedrooms on Airbnb. Um, the retail market, and when I say retail market, I mean the all states, the Liberty Mutuals, the Nationwide, the you know famous the pro football player is advertising for them on TV. Basically, <laughs> uh, they have what's called a home sharing endorsement. It's super inexpensive, and since you're sharing common space with the guests, with things get weird, you're there and can stop it from happening, um, or call the cops. Right. So right. when you're renting out individual rooms with shared spaces in your house proper insurance is not the right fit okay you need a home sharing pol a home owner's policy with a home sharing endorsement it maybe costs 250 bucks a year um that's a better fit for that type of exposure awesome. if you have that's a, good info. yeah if you have a nine bedroom house and you live in one bedroom and rent out eight individual bedrooms you're kind of you're a hotel <laughs> <laughs> right, you probably, right. You should probably go look at a hotel, motel type policy um, in that case. Uh, if you have a, let's use the same example, right? Because all, you know, all, all these investors, you guys are going to have different types of things. It's not all the basic single family house or condo. So I go and buy, I go and buy an old hotel in Florida. You see this a lot. So I find a motel in Florida. I get a great deal on it. I'm borrowing money from, from you guys. Um, doing a big renovation and I'm making nine individual units under one roof. They have their own kitchen. They're basically nine studios, their own kitchenette, their own bathrooms, their own means of egress. There's no shared spaces with guests. I don't have a shared pool. I don't have shared hot tubs or sauna. I'm no longer a motel or a hotel. I am basically nine apartments under one roof. Hmm. We would ensure that because there's no shared spaces. It's no longer a hotel motel type risk. There are nine individual short-term rental studios under one roof, right? Um, so that would be something we would look at. 